Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Faith Family Fulfillment. I am your co-host, Chris. And I'm Suzanne. And um, we have a very, very special guest today. We have Dr. Suze with us today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> today is the day I get yeah. to interview my wife, yeah. who just completed her PhD. I did. And we're going to go back and kind of unpack all, unpack all of that. I have lots of questions for you. Oh, well, dear. So, this is great. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm really excited. Okay. Cool. I'm glad you're excited. I'll pray us in. Okay. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this conversation. And thank you for the gift of drive that you put in Suzanne and the way she shows up in this world. And the gift that you've given her and the desire that you've given her to really affect um, people's lives in a way that they're healthier in all aspects of their life. As you lead and guide this conversation and um, just... Keep you at the center of all the story so that you get all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, when we first met just a little over 30 years ago, mm-hmm. we were having a conversation, the first, first real deep conversation that we ever had. Okay. That, you know, where we ended up like up till three or four in the morning conversation, mm-hmm. that, that conversation. Okay. And in that conversation, you made a statement to me. Okay. At the time, you were studying psychology. Yes. And I asked you one of the reasons why. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons, it wasn't the only reason, was, do you remember the answer? I, you do. Clearly. I do. <laughs> I do very clearly. You said, I want to have doctor in front of my name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So it seems surface level, but it was much deeper than that. Yes. And here we are 30 plus years later. Yeah. 30 years and a few months. In a few months. Mm-hmm. And it's now Dr. Suzanne. Yes. Um, why chase it? Why not? Okay. But why? Um, well, a lot of reasons. So, you know, like you said, initially I was studying psychology. Wrapped that up. Went into grad school for therapy, counseling and therapy. Had worked in the mental health space at the community level and did that for about a year realized that that was a lot of paperwork but not a whole lot of um not a whole lot of helping people a lot of paperwork but not a whole lot of helping people circumstances be what they were at the time we ended up moving this was in um, 1996 so there was no online school at that point there were two options to continue down that road at that point One was um, in Boone, one was in in Boiling Springs. Neither of them were within five hours of where we were living at the time. So rather than putting that to bed, it just kind of got put to the side. Not like we're not just going to take it off the table. It's just not now. Fast forward, I guess, to 2006. um, Started working on nutrition, a nutrition applied nutrition. In New York, went up once a month for about a year and realized you can impact a lot of things by what you put in your body. And that evolved into a whole lot of other things, into getting a master's degree in applied nutrition. And when when 2020 rolled around and people were looking for options to be healthier holistically, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all the things... I was looking, okay, so how can I serve people better? This opportunity came about, and why not take it? Okay, tell us about that opportunity. So I... Because we're going to go back and unpack each one of those levels, but tell us about the current. Are you going to catalog and remember? Yeah, we're going to go. Okay. Um, So I was looking for education that would allow me to have a little bit more concrete say in people's health. It's... It's an unfortunate space where you can get on the internet, you can go online, you can find an expert, and I use that very loosely, (laughs) in anything. But where's the fruit? What have they done that has really shown that they, one, know what they're talking about, and two, that they're not just trying to sell you something to help themselves? And one of the things that I know people respect tremendously is someone who is a doctor doesn't matter what you're a doctor of and that's not saying anyone is bad 
but people just because of what we have been taught, what we have been conditioned to understand is if a doctor tells you to do something, you question them very little. I think you should question everything. So that's a whole different conversation. So in looking for ways to kind of move that forward, I, and I won't say stumbled across, because that's not right. But I found a program that was biblically based naturopathy. If you're not familiar with naturopathy, it's natural natural healing, natural medicine, to make it very, very simple. It's more than that, but that's the most simple part of it. I looked at it. Um, and they say, we can give you six years to finish. It's 36 classes. It's a lot. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of you. Um, the 2006, where you started mm-hmm. shifting from, at the time we had, we, we had owned the gym, shut it down. We talked about what a horrible mistake that was for our family. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we had moved away from that. Um, but you were, st- I mean, you were coaching. Yes, I was still coaching. I mean, more than anything with physique sport, sports, more than anything. Um, but in 2006, when you decided to make the move into that space, into chasing more of a advanced understanding of nutrition mm-hmm. why what what was the driver behind i want to know more well at the time we had two two small children at some point i don't know when at what point we had had the conversation that we were going to try to be as diligent as we could be in raising our children in a very healthy um no chemical junk food, garbage, just really try to feed them well. Minimize it. Yeah. That's correct. Um, because we knew that there were benefits behind that. But you can go very surface. You can like have a 30,000-foot view of that, and you can have a ground-level view of that. And I'm a nerd at heart, and I want to know everything about everything to the smallest little component. How does it fit together? How does it work? What is the best way to combine it? How do you take the world that we live in and make it less impactful for longevity? Because we want to be around for our kids. Yeah. So that schooling was with the Instagram Institute for Integrated Nutrition Thank and you. Columbia University. Yeah, make, I'm glad you made me not yeah. say that. Um, IIN is what we always yes. called it. And that process, walk us through that process of chasing that, going after that master's degree. So that was actually um, the beginning of it. Yes, that was the beginning of it. And so it was um, a long weekend, once a month for 10 months. I learned from some of, in my opinion, the best of the best in their fields. Um, Deepak Chopra, Dr. Andrew Weil, um, Barry Sears, you know, all of those you know, really inf- influential people in the space of there's a better way. They all have their own spin on it. Right. But taking nuggets from every single part of what they taught and then combining it to make it mine. So that was um, the beginning of the process. Fast forward to um, 2016, and there came an option for anyone who had gone through that program up to, I don't remember how many years, because I was the last of the live classes. So it went online exclusively after me. But they gave the opportunity for anyone going through that program who had X number of years experience doing health coaching, nutrition coaching, to be entered into a master's level program for applied nutrition through a different school. So we got somewhat fast-tracked. So a two-year program took 18 months to go through that. And again, learning how to ask good questions, how to listen to what's not being said, how to fashion a path forward for people to live better, whatever that looks like for them. And that, you finished that master's in? December of 17. December 17, so pre-COVID, pre-all that. How much of an impact do you think that had on how our family approached what happened over the next five years after that? Meaning... You'd learn all that information, right? And then you were using that in your with your clients. Mm-hmm. 
And then you come into the season of everybody's afraid of everything. Right. Right. And that's not how we approached it. No, we didn't. We just kept living. Right. We just kept living. So what effect do you think that had, though, on your clients and our, and our family? I think for my clients, I think it gave them a lot of confidence in knowing what was best for themselves. Being able to look at any given piece of, of information, health or otherwise, and confidently be able to, to dissect it, peel back the layers of it, and then decide for themselves if it, was, if it was something that they wanted to put into practice. For our family, that's hard to say because, I mean, we, we really didn't change how we lived. Um, we both still worked every day. Um, our kids, of course, were not in school, but we still took them places. We still did things. But it was more about how, how what we did prior to that, I think, made the biggest impact. So going into 2020, into all of the, um, the health crises that followed, I feel like, you can give your opinion, but I feel like everything we had done prior to that put us in a far better position in terms of the impact it had on our family um, with our health because nobody in our family really, I mean, we had some you know, health hiccups along the way, but nothing that I would consider out of the ordinary or unusual. Yeah. Cause you know, it's a, I, I talked about it a lot prior to the 2020, um, like you said, health crisis. I like that word. Um, but cause it's yeah, health crisis, but we had done some math about our children. Mm-hmm. So Avery was 20, 19 at the time, mm-hmm. she was in school. Um, then Gabrielle would have been 15. Shelby would have been, um, I don't know, 10. Mm-hmm. And with them at 19, 15, and 10, if you just do the math, it's 30 plus years mm-hmm. of childhood, mm-hmm. which in most cases is when the most sickness happens. Yes. Because your body's getting immune. Like it's, it's building, acclimated. Yeah, acclimated to it, its surroundings. And over that 30 plus years, we had only had four doctor visits that weren't just checkup visits mm-hmm. where they had, like, I think Avery had strep one time. I think Shelby might have had strep one, but it was earaches. Ear yeah, yeah, it was, but it was so small. Mm-hmm. And Avery being as early as she was, they told us her, her immune system is going to be compromised. She's going to get sick very often because she was you know, almost eight weeks early. Mm-hmm. And that didn't hold true. Mm-hmm. But even going back to that far ago, you remember you made a lot of her baby food. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. So um, it's kind of been a focus for you as long as I've known you. Mm-hmm. Like you've always been focused on your health. Um, what was the shift for the doctorate? I mean, I, I said 30 years ago, you said that's what you wanted. But I know it wasn't just about putting the letters in front of your name or behind your name. No. It's way more than that. So yeah. I want to hear the motivation mm-hmm. behind, okay, now I've got a clear path of something I know will have impact. I'm almost speaking for you now, but like, yeah. what's the drive? So we'll back up just a little bit okay. and kind of give some, um, so I did start out in psychology. Actually, I started out as a chemistry major and then as I was talking to advisors and you know, folks who had been through the educational system, they're like, yeah, you really don't need to go that route. It's not going to serve you well. This will serve you better. Gotcha. Because I was kind of tired of taking chemistry, so it was fine. <laughs> um, but psychology is where it started. And that started from just seeing that there was a huge need for people to unburden themselves in confidence with someone that they could know, love, and trust and get a path forward, which is why I left mental health, because there's no path forward in the mental health system. And that's not to knock, I mean, I'm not saying that there's not a place for therapy, there's not a place for that, but in my experience, when you're looking at therapy and counseling, you're looking backwards. And when you're looking at coaching, you're looking at a path forward. So I was more interested in the path forward. When we didn't get to finish the first round of grad school it was incredibly disheartening I won't say devastating it was just disheartening because it was kind of like okay well this is throwing a big rock in my path and I didn't want it here and this I don't like it 
move forward through all of that, going into um, going through IAN, going through getting a master's degree, everything kind of started to to make sense. So you don't want to look at it as, I'm not where I need to be. You have to look at it as, I'm just not there yet. And going through all of that and then having the opportunity to just continue learning in an act of service. So everything you learn going through that process has nothing to do with you. You're just cataloging knowledge. Where you put that knowledge into action is where it matters. So going through, you know, saying, okay, now I can get a doctorate, which means I'm going to know everything I can possibly digest about everything God's given us to heal our bodies, everything God has given us to make ourselves better. If I can unpack all of that, then I have such a massive toolbox. There's... There's very few people that I can't serve now because I have, like I said, a very massive toolbox to, to pull from. And just learning, even for ourselves, you know, your family history has, you know, heart and head concerns. Mm-hmm. Learned a lot over the last few years about prevention, even at your parents' age, prevention, what you can do now to keep that at bay for as long as possible so that your longevity is there. One of the things that I feel very strongly about is how can we serve people if we can't even go up a set of stairs? How can you serve people well if if you're so in the ditch? You can't do. Because part of serving is doing. So going that far through that process has very little to do with me. It's just I now I have so many more opportunities and options to give people so that they can go and do and live better and show up better for their families, for their employers, for their community, for their churches, for their kids, for their grandkids, for whoever. I, I don't feel like it's a lot about me. Yes, it was something I wanted to do. But the outcome of it is not so much about me. Good answer. So why biblically based? Well, God does a lot of good things in the Bible, but he tells you very, very succinctly how to live well and how not to die. It's very clear cut. Right. So, very clear cut. So what was that surprising to you? Like, I mean, we... I mean, it's faith, family, fulfillment. Right. It's not a secret, right, right, that we lean on our faith for pretty much every decision. Yeah. But diving in deep when it comes to health, mm-hmm. medicine, mm-hmm. you know, most people don't look at the Bible in that sense. It's about, right. it's the story of God. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's funny. People refer to it all the time as the best um, owner's manual. Mm-hmm. Well, owner's manual can tell you what to do and what not to do and, you know, right. the problem is most right. people use it like an owner's manual. It's they only go when they have problems. A troubleshooting. Yes. So was it surprising, the things you learned? I look at Leviticus way differently now. <laughs> <laughs> and and I say that. So it's not just how to kill a goat. It's not. It's not. <laughs> so when I was going through, and <laughs> I know that sounds really funny, <laughs> but when I was going through um, – the way people have lived, you know, up until modern times, which and I say modern times being probably the last 150 years, mm-hmm. um, technology has advanced to the point where we don't have as many concerns about how we how we raise and process our foods and that sort of thing. We should be concerned about that, but but as a whole, we're very detached from that at this point. So back up, you know, into you know, the late 1800s. People were raising their their meats and proteins. They were butchering them. They were figuring out ways to store them. You know, refrigeration was not a common thing. Neither it wasn't in the Bible either. So, when it was you know eat these animals but don't eat those, it was not necessarily just because they were unclean because they were they're very dirty, but it's because if you eat that, then it's a bottom feeder. It's going to eat everything it can get its hands on. So what is that going to do to you? It's no different than today. You know, it's it's an absolute one to one parallel. 
But as you look at, if you look at the do's and don'ts, you can apply them then and you can apply them now equally. So, yeah, it was kind of like, oh, okay, I'm going to look at this as a how-to guide to live and not die versus, you know, just a how to do every day-to-day stuff. Gotcha. So, because, like, when people have asked me, like, well, she's getting her doctorate in, and I talk about naturopathy, I say, but it's the, the, di- the difference will be it's biblically based. Because I don't know that I've even heard of anybody else doing it that way. Obviously, there's a school for it, so there's more than one, mm-hmm. right? You're not the one, but it's got to be a small group of people. That, it is a small group. That's yeah. right. So, um, you, you talk about how many ways you want to serve, mm-hmm. right? Where do you see yourself serving the most? Where my feet Where, are. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I knew that'd be your answer. But specifically, what do you feel yeah. called to do the most? Well, we were just talking about it a little bit at dinner. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel called to serve the people that work in your business because if they're better, they're healthier, they're managing all the things better, they're going to show up better. They're going to serve our community better. Um, women have a special place in my heart, I guess, because we have three girls. But women typically don't take care of themselves well. And neither do they share stories and talk about seasons of life that women go through. And because nobody talks about it, everybody just feels like they have to suffer by themselves. So one of my big things is, you know, just getting people together, sharing stories. You're not by yourself. And that's not normal. Suffering through life is not normal. All right. So why do you think we do it? Why do you think we, you said specifically women, like women don't, I mean, I know women don't take care of themselves because they're too busy taking care of their children, Mm -hmm. including the one they're married to. At least that's our house. (laughs) And so if, if that's the case, if, if women don't take care of themselves well, like why, how, why do you think there's not been something put in place to change that? Do you want my politically correct answer or do you want my honest no, answer? No, I mean, honesty always. Okay. Because, one, women tend to, people, not just women, people tend to feel bad in degrees. So you don't realize how bad you feel until you feel really bad. So that's part of the problem. There's no self-awareness and connection with your body. Mm-hmm. So you don't know when something is just a little bit off. It has to be way off for you to take notice. But for women... Women like to share a lot of things. They'll share breakup stories. They'll share um, bad customer service experiences. They'll share a ton of things with their friend cohort. But they very rarely sit and share their struggles, real struggles, with their friends. For a few reasons, I think. Because sometimes women have a hard time understanding that... um, Victimhood doesn't serve you, and that's not a slam. It's just sometimes you can become the center of your universe, and it's hard to see any other pictures. I think you say you can't read the label from inside the bottle. Yeah. So people don't, um, they don't share the harder things because they don't want to be criticized. They don't want to be told, oh, it's all in your head, which is a medical situation, which happens to a lot of women because there's not a lot of training in how to steward women's health well. A lot of people don't understand it. They don't know what to look for. They don't know how to ask good questions. They're too busy. Um, But I think the bigger part is, like, your moms don't talk about what they went through. So daughters don't know. So if the daughters don't know, then when something happens in their life, they don't know if it's normal or not. They don't know if I should expect this or not. They don't know what's around the corner. And because they don't have anybody to talk to about it, then they go completely ignorant, and then they have kids, and it just perpetuates itself over time. Because we've gotten away from a nuclear family being grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, cousins, living close to each other, and having that village and that community so that every generation is serving every generation, we miss out on a lot of opportunities to teach because there's so many other things taking up our time. So you think it's just the inability to communicate the message down one generation? And being self-aware, yeah. Gotcha. 
So where do you think the lack of self-awareness comes from? That's a good question. I think you. I think for a lot of people, it's just that they're not in touch with anything in their life deeply enough to know when something's off just a little bit. I think that I think you're more likely to know when your thermostat in your house is off by a few degrees than you are when your body is not functioning well. Yeah, that's a good point. So, what's next? You know, the idea of what's next is, I mean, in fact, I, I listened to a sermon today, and it was talking about, you know, the transition from someone seeking a belief and then becoming a believer and how most people say, once you're a believer, like that's the end of it. And we've yeah. talked about that, you yeah. know, that's not the end of it. It's fact, it's the beginning. It's the of beginning. It. It's just when it gets <laughs> so um, reaching this level of toolbox, mm-hmm. which I love the way you said that, like, what do you see as next? We were just talking about that. You're going to make me decide. No, I'm not making yeah. you decide. It's, I mean, I'd, I'd just love to hear. I mean, I love what you yeah. were unpacking um, on our date. We had a date night tonight. Um, like, how do you see, again, women are a huge concern for you. I get, and I think you're right. I think it's because we know we have three daughters mm-hmm. who are really interested in solving big problems. Mm-hmm. And they can solve that problem well as long as they're well. Right. And, um, and they are really good students when it comes to things. Mm-hmm. It, well, for the most part. They're good students. Sometimes they'll just say, yeah, I know I'm not going to feel good. I'm just going to deal with it. Yes, they do. <laughs> we all do. But that's self-awareness. <laughs> it is self-awareness. <laughs> so, I mean, I know that women are a big focus. Um, like, what would that look like? You said serving here mm-hmm. would be a big a big win for you mm-hmm. because you feel like it would help us become better, mm-hmm. better stewards of the community, better stewards of our people, mm-hmm. um, which you know is on my heart. So, like, what would each one of those look like? I'd love to know. So for here, when I when I talk to people one on one or we have we have our groups, stress comes up a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's a very high stress environment. It's very demanding. Um, and I think that people don't realize that stress is is like a, a rain cloud. It just pours on everything in your life. It affects everything in your life. So here the focus is one, to, to help people become self-aware and just kind of know your stress is going to be as much as you want it to be. You can prevent a lot of it. Right. And here's how. So coaching to have them steward themselves or lead themselves well. And you and I have talked about if people are well, they're managing their lives in, in all parts and in a very holistic way, then they're going to be better team players. They're going to look for opportunities to lend a hand. They're just going to be less inwardly focused, and they're going to look for ways to do things outside of themselves. But you can't do that if you're dealing with a whole lot of garbage. So helping people to unpack that, figure out what they have control over, what they need to put away, how they can manage and control their stress better, how they can manage and control their activity level, their, um, I call it food and movement. I will never call it diet and exercise. <laughs> but, you know, how, what are you feeding yourself? Physically, what are you putting in your mouth every day? You know, visually, what are you looking at every day? What are you listening to every day? What kind of energy is around you every day? And helping them to really figure out their environment everywhere. Because if they can do that, then they'll know, okay, it's time for me to leave this spot and go somewhere else and do something. You always have a negative Nelly in the crowd. They tend to want to flock to the person with the most compassion and who's going to listen to them the longest. But having the ability for them to know, okay, this isn't serving me and it's bringing me down. I, I got to get away from it. Because if you can sit with them in it, then your, your problems are just going to get bigger. So helping them have a lot of awareness in that and moving it forward. And for women just helping them to understand that when they're not by themselves, we've all gone through varying degrees of of garbage. What is normal? What is not normal? What potential looks like in areas where they're, they're struggling, whether that be with, you know, their health, their hormones, fertility, conception, you know, pregnancy, whatever it is, menopause, you name it. 
to help them see potential and possibility in those moments and not just, oh my gosh, this is something I have to suffer through. This is something I've got to deal with. Seeing it as an opportunity to, you know, okay, well, I can make this one small shift and it's going to have a lot of payoffs. And then next week I might make one small shift. And doing that over time creates this massive amount of change. But people want to just go in and and jump into the deep end all at one time and then they find themselves drowning. There's a reason for that. You're not ready. But helping them walk from start to finish so that they can get there successfully. For anybody can get there successfully. Right. And the reason I said that because, you know, the automotive space is unfortunately male dominated. It is. And having a heart for their for women, this would be a much different environment, right? Although I know in your well being group classes, it's majority women, correct? Or is it about a fifty fifty mix? It depends on this. It depends on the time of year mm-hmm. and the time of the class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I would say, if you look at everybody who's come through, it's about a fifty-fifty mix. Cool. And the unique part of that is, and I think I said this the other night when we were at dinner. Um, people are the same. Their circumstances are different, but what they struggle with is the same. Right. And having that across the board awareness of okay, well, yours looks a little different, but we're kind of in the same stuff. Gives a lot of people peace because then they no longer feel like they're the only one. Gotcha. So, and and again, you have since coming off stage, Mm -hmm. right, had health struggles Mm -hmm. that we both feel like came from physique physique competitions. You know, they're not... You look amazing on stage, but you are not a healthy person on stage. It takes a lot out of not just you. I'm, no, I'm saying anybody, of, yeah, yes, anybody that's doing physique sports. How much of a determinant was that? Your like your own search for an answer. How much of a determinant was that for the next level of education? Oh, it was a lot because, and I even have this on my website. You know, going through that made me very aware that I was going to have to step completely outside of traditional medicine to find to find my answers. And as frustrating as that has been, I would say from, and I want to say this loosely because I don't know a day date, but about 2013, 2014 was, 15 was probably the worst. Um, and from where I was then to where I am now, I mean, it's not, it, you can't compare it. It's not even in the same conversation. But me, being like every other human on the planet, wants it right now. Mm -hmm. I wanted to feel better right now. I wanted to, you know, feel like my body was working for me, not against me right now. And sadly, that's not the way our bodies work. You, it's like you have, um, you're standing in front of a dam with lots of little holes so you plug one, and then another one pops open a little bit bigger. Well, when you're working through health concerns and health problems, that's what your body does too. Okay, here's the fire. All right, put that one out. Okay, well, now I've got some energy to focus on this next thing. So people feel like a lot of times that they're failing when really you're just coming to the next thing, and now you actually have the physical and mental capacity to deal with it. When that next thing pops up, just know it's okay. Because you'd have never known that that was a problem if you hadn't dealt with the things in front of it. So the problems get smaller as you go, but that doesn't mean that you're ever going to arrive at this perfect picture of health. There's always going to be something that is going to require a little bit of focus and attention. And I think that's that's one of the big reasons of kind of just going in a little bit deeper. Okay, okay I've explored all the things that I can find through um, traditional me- means of searching. We'll just leave it at that. Right. And, but I know there's got to be something more because I'm not there yet. So there's got to be something else. Okay, what is that something else? And then just digging, and digging, and digging. I found a lot of answers over the last three years. All right. So. And they served you well? They are serving me well. <laughs> it's an active, yeah. it's an active. Constant. Thing. Yeah. So biggest takeaway Never underestimate the power of a plan. Wow. That's good. It's not what I was expecting, but that's good. What were you expecting? I mean, personal journey. Mm. Let me rephrase my question then. Okay. I do like that answer, though. Like, 
because there is so many things that are plant based, mm -hmm. which I'm like not my diet, but answers, right, right, that remedies. are remedies. Um, that you and I have had lots of conversations about, and I, you know, one of the things I'll say for me has been fun is watching our daughters as they encounter things mm -hmm. come to you and go, "What's my solution?" Like, what's my best path? Yeah, what's like they legitimately come to you and say, I know you know what's my best way. Mm -hmm. Now, multiple times they've gone on their own and tried the quicker, a quicker path, mm -hmm. and that Fail. always fails. <laughs> always. 100% of the time has failed. But you learn through failure. So. Oh, yes, it's good. I mean, and, and if they were putting themselves in massive danger, it would be th different. Oh, you but put the just, brakes on. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, so no, never underestimate the power of a plant. That's maybe the title. I don't know. What's <laughs> but what's your biggest personal mm -hmm. personal takeaway? Don't stop. For in in what way? In any way. Gotcha. If you want something, just because life hasn't gone your way, don't stop. Cool. And just because it doesn't happen when you think it should. Be patient. Gotcha. So when you talk about this journey, mm -hmm. there are certain points where you seem to get emotional. Mm -hmm. What makes you emotional about it? I would have liked to have been here 25 years ago. But if I had been here 25 years ago, I would be foolish, naive, um, unweathered and unproven. So all those things make it better? They do. Yeah. Because you can sit in any level, and I'm going to say, I'm going to curse. You can sit in any level of shit you want to. But if the person who you trust with your shit has also walked through it, then they're going to tell you things you don't want to hear. Right. But they're going to tell you things that are going to make you better. And 30 years of, and I'm not going to say we have walked through this shit, <laughs> but 30 years of life experience, 30 years of, of living, 30 years of having a, you know, a premature child in this world, one who has struggled with, you know, impulsivity and executive functioning problems one who at the age of four you know we unbeknownst to us could barely see right um those aren't massive struggles you know, people would say well i've struggled through way worse you have probably but let me tell you the steps we took or the steps i took or the steps our family took in working through those things and resolving those things, the steps aren't that different. All right. Had I done, had I been where I am now, you know, 25 years ago, I would have had none of that. It's like people who write parenting books and have no children. <laughs> what are you basing it on? Theory is amazing, but have, have you proven it? Have you, do you have anything to show for it? I'm proud of you. Thank you. Super cool to see, actually. Like, she, if you're listening, she sent me this picture of everything being done, and I was away and out of town, and I became the loudest person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, um, just very exciting to see, yeah. and um, I am excited for whatever's next, yeah. and because um, I get to go on this ride with you, I just gotta get used to being able to say, "This is my wife, Doctor Suzanne." Esther, it's cool. It's you know you just gotta get used to it. <laughs> I'm not getting used to it either. Yeah, and and we and we're having mixed mixed reviews on Doctor Suze. So the I w am the first person, and I nicknamed you Suze. Mm -hmm. Her name is Suzanne. We first started dating. I started calling you Suze. I guess you thought I needed a nickname. I had to have a nickname, right? I don't know why. I really don't even know where that started. You know. But it's lasted 30 years plus. Yeah. And um, so the idea that came to my mind was Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Right? I'll make a rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So if you're out there listening, make a comment. If you're watching, make a comment. Yeah. Doctor Suze, S U Z, yes or no? Does it does it does it make sense to, to or is it just funny? Oh yeah. It could be, it could be just it, funny. It could be just funny. But I am really proud of you. I know our girls are proud of you. The example that you've given them, they've they'll learn more they've learned as much from your example as they have from when you say to them, This is your this is your answer. When they come to you and say, Mom, how do I get better? And you give them a an answer. A holistic answer. That's a solution you taught them. But you taught them grit, and resilience, stick to itness, all those things. And I'm proud of that. As much as I'm proud of what you've learned to serve others, I'm proud of what you taught our kids by going through the process. Because they talk about it. You know? So it sets a great example. Yeah, it's not just crazy mom. Not just crazy. Not crazy, mom. crunchy mom. Yeah. So I love you. Thank you. Thank you. you praise out. I do. Cool. You gonna let me do it? <laughs> Lord, thank you for um, just the gift of my wife and how she serves and how she has a passion to serve those around her and to build her toolbox and the way that you've led her in that way and the realization that you know the twenty five years of going through it all and how in those times of 25 years she kept you at the center of it, really just set her up to be able to serve in a way that I don't think anybody else can. Truly unique. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. See you guys next week. <laughs>